Here we go. Fantastic. So, I will take it briefly in, in our two languages in fin, fin, here in Finland, and after that I will switch to English for the reminder. Eli, tervetuloa kaikille tähän Nordic Hub Cluster-koulutukseen ja sen ensimmäisen sessioon. Nie alla järtlit välkomna till Nordic Hub Cluster Utbildning och första sessionen. Koska koulutus järjestetään englanniksi, niin tulee myös itse tosiaan pääsääntöisesti käyttämään englantia, mutta jos teillä on kuitenkin joku kysymys, jonka estätte mieluummin suomeksi, niin voitte ilman muuta tehdä sen ja käännän, käännän kysymyksen sitten englanniksi. Så eftersom utbildningen går på engelska så kommer jag även att i huvudsak ta, ta detta på engelska. Men om ni har någon fråga så, så är det bara att ställa det på, på svenska om ni hellre använder det språket. So, let's switch to English now. Uh, my name is Laura Laaksonen. I work as a marketing and communication specialist, as well as the Nordic Hub manager here at the Expo. Uh, as we have uh, people working with or in clusters, as well as those who are interested in the subjects, I want to take this chance to, to briefly tell you about what Nordic Hub is doing. So Nordic Hub is coordinated by the Expo, and it has two main functions. It is, first of all, a platform for Finnish cluster activity and its development. Our goal is to, to highlight and connect Finnish clusters and to increase information exchange so that not only cluster actors, but also decision makers and the broader audience's awareness and knowledge about clusters and cluster activity increases. Secondly, Nordic Hub is a bridge builder, a network that aims to connect Finnish clusters with Nordic clusters and to enhance cooperation in the Nordics. This work is done in tight collaboration with our Nordic partners. The goal is also to start joint projects together and introduce new overall solutions utilizing modern proactive ecosystems think. So serving especially the first purpose, also the, the second one, we are today starting a unique learning journey uh, during which we will dive into different relevant themes regarding clusters. As said, this is the first of four sessions in the Nordic Hub class training with the next session being already tomorrow and the two last in mid October. I am uh, extremely excited and honored to present to you the trainers in this class training module, Christian Rangen and Roberto Chaverri, who both represent the company Engage Innovate. Christian, who is the CEO and co-founder of Engage Innovate, as well as uh, strategy tools, and who is also involved in many other organizations, is a person who we can truly call an experienced cluster expert. He has worked around the world with companies, clusters, and governments, and with his help, good results have been achieved in the establishment and early stage cluster development, cluster management training, ecosystem development, cluster strategy, national cluster policy development, and innovation subcluster development. Roberto leads Engage Innovates operations in Latin America and the development of strategy tools in the region. He has multiple years of experience as a regional lead in multinational companies like the Clorox Company, British American Tobacco, and the Coca-Cola Company. So before I give the stage to the, to, to the stars today, to our trainers, I would like to remind you of a few important practicalities. During the session, uh, the chat works as a good way of, of where you can present your questions. And also I encourage you to network use, utilizing the chat. You can, for instance, share your LinkedIn profiles and uh, websites or, or whatever. And, uh, during the session, uh, please keep your microphones and cameras off uh, if you're not discussing anything that relates to, to you have a question or something because, because it, it uh, makes everything run a bit smoother. And as said, the event is being recorded. So please, Christian Roberto, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Larry. And, uh, you know, we, we would normally say keep your cameras on and keep your microphones open because we don't want you to accidentally start doing other types of work like emails or yoga or push ups or, or anything else. Um, good morning, everyone. And um, greetings from Norway. So I had a, a, a nine year old birthday this morning. We had chocolate cake for breakfast and then triple espressos to, to wash it down with. So I'm super excited to get a chance to, to meet you all. Now, we, we may have met, and here we're gonna need a, a quick sort of show of hands or a comment in the chat. So for those of you that joined our previous session, which we hosted about six months ago, um, it was a four day online 
uh, cluster training program. Could we have a quick either show of hands in your Zoom window uh, or a quick comment? Because we just want to check how many of you have been through the previous and how many of you are here for the first time. So we're going to see, and, uh, I'm seeing the first comments in the chat. Let's see, all right. Now, if we're not getting a lot of these comments, Roberto, I think we're going to assume that most people are here for the first time, which would be great. I think there are some common names that I recall, but yeah, most of the I audience. Agree. All right, so we have a few good, good, good. So, so Christopher and Trino, uh, Katja, obviously, uh, we're gonna make sure that you guys are the team experts, which means when we split you into teams a little bit later today, uh, you will have at least one experienced team manager each. So we got your names and there's no way that you can escape your responsibility right now. All right, I'm gonna share my screen here, Roberto. and. We're gonna start here. Now, people ask, hey, are you gonna share the slides? And the answer is partially yes, absolutely. And then second, there are no slides. So that's kind of a catch. We will be sharing out all the materials for those of you that maybe have a, a important meeting, maybe you have a colleague that can't join, et cetera, et cetera. Don't worry, you will get all the materials afterwards. But most of the time we will be working here. So in just a second, we're going to give you the, um, the link and we're going to invite you guys to, to log in as well, because as we work over these four days, everything will be happening using this Miro board. Now we know from previously that people from Finland are awesome, super good in, in Miro. And we know that most other countries are terrible. So you guys are going to be a blast. Now, what we're going to be doing, and, and um, Larry alluded to this, so we have, we have four days together. But what I hope is that you find this interesting enough and worthwhile enough that you actually want to do some uh, volunteer extra work between the sessions. Day number one, which is today, is sort of the big picture. We're going to talk about Finland at the national level. So we are going to take what we call a national perspective and be discussing policies and frameworks. What do we have and what are we missing? And I think that policy level or national level discussion is extremely important to frame clusters in the right way. Where we're not going to go down to the individual cluster level today, that's, that's tomorrow but really understanding kind of the importance of the national framework. And we're going to look at examples from Denmark. We're going to look at examples from, um, from Canada. Uh, we may mention a few examples from Latin America and Norway, but we want to focus on day number one on this national perspective and really why clusters matter to a country like Finland. Day number two, which is tomorrow, then we're going to jump down into individual clusters. We're going to have you guys select a cluster that you want to focus on. We're going to work, work on strategy. We're going to work on funding and business models. And we have a long line of case studies to um, review together. Then we have a couple of weeks before we meet for day number three. Day number three is more about the people, leadership, organizational design and structure. And I think, you know, just between you know, the, the two of us, there is a big gap in most countries for how do we build and optimize cluster structures or cluster management organizations as some like to call them. So that is about the people, the leadership and the structure. And then finally, we're kind of gonna step back again at the national level. And now that we've been through kind of this, this, um, this process together, we're gonna to look at what could a national program structure look like? What is, or maybe what should be Finland's national cluster policy and how do we make that happen? And I, I emphasize this because if you look at countries like Norway or Canada, you, you know, it, it never really start. It never really start with a government policy being implemented. There's always people like you guys that initiate that discussion and initiate that process. 
So if you say, hey, Finland should have a better cluster program, well, you know, probably I would agree, but you can't sit, sit around and wait for someone in government to do something. It is going to be up to you guys to help drive that change. Now, a couple of um, reading points. Um, this is completely optional, which means that you really should read it. Um, so we have selected one uh, short piece of reading for tomorrow. We're not expecting you. We're not going to quiz you. This is not a test in any kind of way. But if you would like to, uh, you're going to have a lot of benefit from reviewing this cluster business models um, in advance. And Roberto, how many, how many pages? What is this? this is like four pages, five pages? Um, yeah, multiply by 50 or something like that. But no, it's it's an easy read. I it's promise. Easy. Yeah. And for those of you that don't have time, uh, we've selected something even easier for next time. Some of you may have already caught this, but we have one short blog post. And this is super, this is like seven minutes. Uh, one short blog post on what is an innovation cluster and also how, how do we develop these innovation super clusters. Uh, more on that on day number three. And then finally, and, and this is new, so those of you that joined previously haven't seen this, uh, we would encourage you to read some of these classics by, the, the, by Denmark. Uh, Denmark is a country that has done a really good job over years to develop national cluster policy frameworks. And they had their cluster strategy 1.0, then they had the cluster strategy 2.0, which you can see ran from 16 to 2018. And then they evolved that into their new um, stronghold clusters or uh, Danish superclusters. So you, you can really see how the policy has evolved over those documents. Those are optional, but strongly recommended going into day number four. Um, all right, um, Roberto, let's let's do, I, I know Laurie was, was, was kind to us, but do you want to do like yeah, a one minute introduction to yourself? And this is such a cool picture. Where, where is this taken, by the way? Um, that is actually in a very um, far away town in Guatemala. And that is my daughter, Camila, and she's usually my partner in crime. She will be working and studying late. So uh, she's, she might stumble around here but now it's it's great to be here a little bit disappointed because last time i said that i was planning to learn some finnish i saw border town like three times in finnish and i think that either i will speak like a criminal or like a criminologist so in any case um great to be back uh with with you guys it's it's great to see such a large team and I've been working with Chris in clusters since 1918. We've been privileged to work a lot here in Costa Rica, where we have been helping the development of the national cluster program, several clusters, run different trainings and cluster building programs in Mexico, Montenegro, last time with you guys, in Serbia, in Ireland, and work along with Chris in Canada, US. And some of the topics that really uh, interest me I'm very passionate about is definitely building capabilities. I've seen the impact of building this common language and understanding of what is clusters, um, national clusters, of course, national programs, and super cluster strategy and business model. I particularly love the business model module, so we'll have a lot of uh, fun around that. I, I like how you make this sound fun, uh, Roberto. Uh, not everyone would agree, but uh, but that's that's the spirit. It's difficult. That's what it is. Uh, all right. So this is me. Uh, I did not select this photo, but it was probably one of the not best ones we could we could find. Thank you, Roberto. That was very kind of you. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with clusters and cluster programs in more than fifty countries. Um, we see a lot of diversity in, in programs and program designs. We see a lot of, um, I would say, lack of knowledge. There's never a lack of, of inspiration and aspiration, but there's a lot of lack of knowledge. Uh, when, we, when we go to the individual cluster level, and there's around 7,000 clusters around the world, around 3,000 in the EU. Uh, when we go to the individual cluster level, 
you know, most people have a pretty good idea of how do we build a single cluster. And there are processes and roadmaps and training programs. But when we go up to the national level, or in some cases, the regional level, uh, there's not a lot of knowledge. There's not a lot of, of, I would suggest, good frameworks for how do we develop, for example, uh, the Danish supercluster program that Mareta and her team developed, uh, or work that we did in Norway to reinvent the, the Norwegian national cluster program. So, so we're doing a lot of work, fascinating work, uh, both in terms of trainings and also projects to develop national or regional uh, cluster programs around the world. And one of them in the US, um, we, uh, we, we work very closely with this, is a innovation cluster accelerator program where from the get, thank you, Roberto, from, from the get-go, they wanted to try to accelerate cluster development and they wanted to do this at a, quote, record pace or record speed of time. And it's been really, 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 really interesting to see what you can achieve in, in less than two years if you really, really put the pieces in place, you have the right people, you have some mandate, you have some funding, and you have a green light to just get going. So I would suggest that any country can build a world-class cluster program in two years if they just get the pieces right. Most, they need a decade because they don't do it right. But it is possible, we've seen it is possible to do it and do it really well in just two years. So that's that's our introduction. All right, let's talk about you guys. Now, uh, Roberto, you wanna give the, uh, the Maro link into Zoom? Yeah, so for the, right for, the, for the first part today, so the first half today, uh, we're gonna work uh, together as a big group. And then the second part today, we're going to split you guys into teams. We're going to have roughly five or six teams. And we will make sure that you have a diverse group of, of, of people with some uh, experience and some maybe a little bit less experience or more new um, that we bring into your groups. And then as we progress into day number two, three, and four, you're largely going to spend the majority of time working in these teams. All right, so we can see people coming in. Now, what we would love for you to do, and we're gonna we're gonna help you here um, a little bit, is we want to start with this beautiful map of Finland. At least I hope it's Finland. It looks like Sweden, maybe, but it, I think it's Finland. It's close enough. Um, and we'd like to have you guys put yourself on the map. Now, those of you that were here last time, you've done this, so you've done this uh, before. But place yourself your name, and also the organization you come from. So if you come from a cluster organization, super, put that uh, put that on, a, on, a, on a, a sticky note and then place it on the map. So just as an example, I'm going to do Chris. Um, and then I am, of course, based in Norway. So I wouldn't go on this map, I would go over here on this side. So we're gonna, we're gonna see what this looks like when we get ballpark 31 names uh, on the map. Now, a couple of points, and Roberto, I can see that only half have logged in. So we need to uh, incentivize people to actually join the Miro link. Um, for those of you that do not have a Miro account, don't worry, you don't need to spend time to set it up. It takes like two minutes, but but you don't need to do that now. So you can just skip it. And I can see some of you having what we call uh, visitor names. So visiting artisan and visiting trailblazer and visiting innovator, that's that's fine. And I also see some having their real names like Trino, like uh, Kautry, uh, like Caroline. Um, so there's, there's a good mix here. We're also doing this to see how, well, adept, you guys are uh, using Maro. So Maro, probably most of you are, are familiar with it, but it is a digital whiteboard that allows us to work and collaborate in real time. And we'll be using this as our main collaboration tool as we progress here over these days. All right, and we go, no, sorry, uh, Roberto, so we have, we have about 20 people logged in. We have about 31 people on the call. Um, so for those of you that have not logged in or maybe you haven't sort of found your way there yet, 
Uh, in the Zoom chat, there's a link to myro.com and then there's a URL. If you click that or if you copy and paste that, you should be able to access the, this Myro board. Yeah, we're getting a little bit more people. Yeah. Now, second, for those of you that have logged in, but you have no idea what you're doing, like I have no idea where I'm going. I'm so lost. Happens all the time. Now, if you look to the up, and right to the upper right side of, of my screen, you'll see my photo with a red circle around it. If you click on that photo, you'll jump to my view or you can jump to anybody else's views. Now this allows you to go from being, I'm a little bit lost, I don't know where I'm supposed to be. And then you can instantly click on someone's photo and you'll jump to where they are based um, on, the, uh, on, on the board. As we progress and, and you work with some of your team members, uh, you'll get a chance to jump to their view, uh, whether it's jumping to Katja's view or jumping to Peter's view or jumping to uh, Petri's view. Uh, and it allows your team to work better together and faster together. Mm -hmm. We have very interesting areas, Chris. Energy, photonics. Ecosystems. I like the group. And then it, it seems like we have a few people that are, uh, they're not from Finland. Uh, that's fantastic. So, so if you, Ken, I just saw your, uh, your, your chat here. Um, if, Roberto, if, if, if someone is not on the map, maybe we should bring in like a world map on the side. So nobody should, uh, should have to be left off the map. Yeah. You want to bring in a world map on the side? Yeah, I have one right here. One second. So Ken, just a, just a really quick comment. So so actually, just just like you're saying, you know, that the cluster landscape in the U.S. is changing, and clusters in the U.S. they have a very interesting history, if if, if you will. But there has been um, like decent uh, amount of support and, and funding from the federal government over the past give or take ten years, uh, not a lot, and it hasn't been really visible. Uh, it's been funded through the Small Business um, Administration program, uh, but it's, it's changing. And, and there are now multiple cluster programs that are receiving significant support and funding from federal level. Uh, so I think the, the whole cluster concept is going through a big revival in the U.S. And it's a, it's, a great, um, it's a great time to be in the cluster space in the U.S. And there's actually a huge American delegation from clusters in Finland right this, uh, this week, actually. Um, good. And then we have uh, Peter. I, I see that you're uh, uh, you're here to observe. Uh, you're very welcome to. Um, we're not going to ignore you. I mean, outright in a hostile kind of way. But we would actually encourage you to, you know, be active in the in the discussions, both in the plenary and also in the groups uh, later on. Um, but that's that's up to you. All right, cool. Um, how is this how is this shaping up, Roberto? Right now, this is uh, this is great, and this this is actually really helpful for input for us because we know yeah. who has signed up, okay. and now we know who has been showed up. Now, with, there you go, perfect. Yeah. So, for those of you that are left off the Finnish map, you can now place yourself anywhere on the world map. Now, yeah. for everyone. I would now encourage you to move down one board or, or, or one picture. <laughs> and you can, you can copy paste uh, the post-it note or you can write a new one. 
But now we're asking, what is your level? What is your experience? So what we would like to see here is you saying, okay, you know, my name is, I'm just going to say, my name is Chris. And I could maybe have zero relevant experience with clusters. Or I could say I have a lot of experience, or I could say that I have actually more than five years of experience, uh, either as a cluster manager, as a cluster policymaker, as a cluster advisor, as a cluster program um, project member. So there's there's a lot of different roles that, of course, people could have had. But we want to see um, your level of experience, because this is important for some of the things that we're going to cover today. So and again, you can copy paste. Uh, you just take your, oh, sorry. Um, you just take your sticky note. I'm going to delete that. You take your sticky note uh, with you, or you write a, a new one completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Marco, I'm 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 assuming that you're on a on a flight somewhere. Just just log in to the in-flight uh Wi-Fi and then you're good to join. All right, so we're starting to get this filled in. We have, uh, we're still missing a few people. So for all of you, um, we'd love to have you fill in kind of the, the level of, of experience. Uh, now I'd like to invite Trino and Christopher for, for a second. Um, you have been through this program, well, a previous version of this program before. Uh, you have significant experience. Would you guys just give us like one or two minutes introduction and who you are and what you do. And we can start with Trino and then we do Christopher next. Uh, hello everyone. Nice to see you and nice to hear you. And hello, uh, Christian, again. Uh, my name is Trino Varvanen and I'm working as an um, international business developer at Technology Center Marinova. And uh, yeah, I have done it for last seven years continuously, both on Nordic level, on European level, but also at international level. So yes, I'm, uh, you know, it's good to be up to date. So I'm really, really glad that you guys organized that kind of um, session for us because it's very, very valuable. And uh, I see many new names, and I have many names I I know from my previous work. So nice to see you, and nice to hear you once again. Uh, and yeah, over to Chris in Vasa. Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Jansson. I work as the communications and brand manager for a cluster called Energy Vasa. You might have heard of it. I think uh, Trino might have mentioned it as well. <laughs> so, so we have a we have a between two organizations a joint love child called Energy Vasa here in Vasa that Vasaken and Merinova manage together. So, so that's uh, one way of doing things, and actually a very good way of doing things it works very well. Now, um, that was a little about me. Now, uh, Christian. My, my, uh, it's a good opportunity to give you a, a sh short apology here. Last time you were in Vasa, we were supposed to meet, but then there was an in urgent invest in case, so I had to really cancel a few hours before our session. So sorry about that. I hope you will next time when you come to Vasa, we can meet up in person then. Um, 
that's perhaps shortly about what I do in uh, yeah. in the Energy Vasa cluster. And then we have the the Energy Week event that we also have here. So I've been working with this now since 2019. So so two two year uh, four years experience and of and 50 percent COVID time. So a very strange mix. <laughs> yeah. Um... Super, uh, Christopher. Thank you. And, uh, and, and and like you said, we were supposed to have met, uh, <laughs> and then something came came up. But that was actually very convenient because now we we you know when I was over last time, we suddenly had some time for a different meeting, which turned out to be a very very nice meeting meeting as well. So, um, but you know, uh, there's something called karma. So if you if you realize that when we go into the breakout sessions, you are on a group all by yourself with no one yes. else to work with. You know, that's called paper. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. No, I mean, it, it worked out very well for me. The, the, the investing case was also very productive and, and very positive. So, so I, I'm very happy to hear that you also had a good, good productive day the same day. Thank you. Yeah. No, th thank you. And, and great, to, great to have you back, Christopher. Um, super. Uh, I'd, love, I'd like to take two, two more kind of from the other uh, end of this scale. And of course, I mean, there'll be a lot of chance to, to speak and discuss for everyone. But maybe I could ask uh, first uh, Nina, Nina Kukunen. Uh, and then Ken, uh, because you're on a very different scale, uh, sorry, side of the scale from uh, uh, from Trinu and Christopher, and just love to have a, a quick introduction. So maybe uh, Nina, if you're able to to say a few words. And while we're waiting for Nina, uh, Ken, if you're able to say a few words, I'd love to have a, a brief intro. Hi, I'm, I'm able to, to say a few words. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Ken Kakur and, and I'm at the moment a marketing graduate. I'm writing my, what, what is it, of handling the yeah, thesis. Yeah. The thesis about uh, the creative industries in the Jakobstad region, mostly, and in the Vasa region, and uh, being a photographer myself, uh, even if I'm a, a graduate student now, I'm close to 50 years. So uh, I'm really interested in, in this, the creative industries with uh, really small actors uh, building a cluster to to actually be able to, to live from one's profession. And uh, because, because uh, the creators now are mostly uh, uh, self-employed uh, entrepreneurs um, and they can hardly live on their, on their own company. Usually they have to have employment on the side or, or on the other way around so so that's why i'm interested in clusters it's it really fits uh the industry that i'm in and interested in so thank you super great we can good good to have you have you with us uh nina good to see you oh hello so sorry i didn't manage to open that uh, microphone earlier. But yeah, I'm Nina Kokkonen and I'm working for uh, Finnish Forest Center at the moment. And uh, we are building up a new cluster to Finland, totally new cluster to the sustainable peatland, to the sustainable use of uh, peatland area. And uh, that's the reason uh, of because we haven't had a, um, well, one third of the uh, area of Finland is, is a peatland and uh, our climate uh, change issues and uh, and the new law about the climate change is is uh, uh, needing some some more action from us and that's why we really need that cluster but the question is is that how to build up a really good cluster which could solve the problems and and uh, make some kind of policy and and uh, and uh, educate and teach also and make the system work because now the peatlands is, is like no one's. It's uh, I've been uh, working in the forest industry, which is a big cluster itself uh, for 15, 20 years, but still I don't know exactly 
that's how to build up a cluster because this is totally a different thing this this kind of cluster but yeah nice to meet you all Nina, welcome. And now, uh, and and there's there's typically four ways the cluster gets started. I'll, I'll cover this really quickly. So one way in, in no specific uh, ranking. So one way is what I call the research based, and the research based has a couple of economists, typically professors, and they do an economic analysis, and they say, "Wow, look, our data shows that there is a cluster here. So if you guys just organize things a little bit better, you have a cluster." based on a very strong bottom-up ecosystem. Uh, so, and we, we've seen this in, in some places in the world. The, the second, which I think you fall into, that's the lone hero. And the lone hero is someone who basically goes through fire and ice, and they go through brick walls, and they build a cluster basically out of nothing. When they start, nobody believes in them. They have no money, they have no support, there's no member organizations and there's no legal structure. You're basically building it from scratch as the lone hero. The third, which collaborates with the lone hero is what we call a, a bottom-up industry. So you have industry leaders, for example, within energy, for example, within tourism, for example, within forestry. And they say that, hey, you know, uh, we as an industry and we as a region, we as a country could be more competitive if we organize ourselves better. Let's develop a cluster from a bottom up. And then you have the fourth, which is much more prevalent, for example, in the Middle East, which is the top down, where it really is a government mandate or a royal mandate in, in some places. And there's a national policy framework that feeds down and then collaborates with the local clusters. So there, there are different ways, but I suspect, Nina, just based on your introduction, that you fall in that lone hero category and I, I look forward to hearing more about that all right cool we have we have one more thing we'd love for you guys to do and it's good to see this diversity that we have and there'll be plenty of chances for us to to us to speak uh, Trino go ahead sorry to interrupt you Chris but I but, but I also noticed that we have a, a very experienced uh, person with with us from all the way from New Zealand, Ifor. Do you see yeah. him or is it? He is probably. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Let's. Uh, maybe. maybe. I, I have no idea what time it is in uh, New Zealand right now. Ifor, you want to you want to drop in and say hi? Yeah. I was just thinking if he's online, a couple of words from him, but maybe <clears throat> it seems that he's not connected. Well, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll let him. Yeah. Pop in and say hi when he when he's ready. Uh, but but you know, good. I I didn't catch that. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Cool. Now we have a we have a great mix here of of, of people. Uh, now. We're going to put you guys in um, a little bit of random groups, um, and we'd love to have in your groups discuss a little bit about expectations. So we'll give you about uh, seven or eight minutes here. Uh, it's a chance for you to say hello to, to different people. Uh, this is not going to be the team that you'll be working on for, for the rest of the, of the day. Uh, so this is a quick introduction and a quick expectation in, in each group. So we'll split you into... Um, into three groups, or four, four groups, and then we will encourage you to discuss, say hi, and expectations. So all of you should now have the breakout rooms open, just jump in, say hi to everyone, and then uh, time for a quick round of expectations. All right, so we have uh, Peter and P. 
Peter and Nina and a few others, it seems you haven't been able to join the, the breakout room. So uh, on your computer, you should have a button that says join breakout. And if you'd like to, you can jump in and say hi to the others uh, as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that Peter Hellstrom has two devices or so probably he already joined with one device. Okay, Roberto, we're starting to see people coming back again. Uh, I hope you had a good chat. I, I joined two of the rooms, but everything was happening in Finnish, so I just nodded politely and, and, and moved on. I'd like to I'd like to have one or two comments. Like what, what was something uh, something you guys discussed, something that emerged in the in the groups for expectation. Uh, give us one one or two kind of uh, input here. Anyone? I can, for instance, start from our group, if it's fine. Yep. Uh, well, uh, in the sense, both the, let's say, people expect to learn more about, uh, you know, how to build a, build working clusters, uh, mm -hmm. then about this, if you think about national cluster programs, for instance, like in, uh, we had part one part participant said that, for instance, in Norway, it, it seems that they're the cluster uh, seen the national nationally like coordinated cluster program everything is working so nicely what can we learn perhaps from that to take to finland and so so mm -hmm. but then also this networking side you know getting to know the the you guys and and, and others here and and learning about uh, other each other's like experiences and so on that kind of things came up super let me let me just co comment briefly on, on that first first point so mm -hmm. one thing i observe and you know, I'm still learning, so I may get this wrong. But one thing I observe is that you have a, a surprising amount of clusters in Finland, but they're probably not organized, structured uh, in the kind of program structure that we have in, for example, uh, Sweden and Denmark and, and, and Norway and, and many other places. And uh, last year, Roberto and me, we did a, a massive global study on all the national or regional cluster programs around, around the world. And I think that for Finland, there's a fantastic opportunity in, in take that sort of the, the bottom-up engagement, that the local engagement that you have at the different clusters and say, let's go build a national umbrella, a national program that has partially to do with long-term strategy. It partially has to do with long-term funding. It has to do with capabilities and development. Uh, so, so I think there's there's a big opportunity for you guys to say individual clusters and then a national <coughs> or federal uh, cluster program is, is something to keep in mind. And that's that's not, that's not something we wait for. Um, it's something that we we reach out to all the key people and and, and start putting together. Um, Larry, thank you. Let's let's do one more one more quick uh, comment on uh, uh, expectation here. Perko, go ahead. Uh, I, I pre pretty much follow what you were just last sentence you were saying that we really should have uh, <clears throat> from here from bottom to up governmental level this funding issue and maybe first is the policy issue and and secondly also the funding and and the, the core thing is that we should understand that I was in our group telling that we should understand the importance of supporting SMEs mm -hmm. to have a focus in SMEs. Today we have these uh, veturi programs where where the big guys are, are in the center and the SMEs are supporting them. Sorry, Piku, go ahead. Yeah, so, so I, I think 
we really, as you said, we have a potential, we have great SMEs, but alone they are too alone and big companies won't take care of them well. And on the other hand, we sub, uh, sub, uh, should be compatible with the European game. There's a lot of yeah. lot of uh, cluster funding, but if you are not structured like them, are, you are you are not out of the game. No, yeah, yeah. no, no, exactly, exactly. And one one thing I think is important is to say that a a national program or or a regional program, but but a national program, it's not really about the money, uh, because some places uh, it gets misinterpreted to be, uh, we need a national cluster program to get us money. And that's a part of it. For example, uh, Denmark and Norway both spend about 20 million euro every single year on the clusters and the cluster program. Of those 20 million, roughly uh, 20, 25% go into operations of various sorts, and then the rest goes into direct funding support for the clusters. But, but I think there's a bigger task that is, you know, do we have a national development strategy? Are we able to, to work more strategically? Uh, is the national cluster program able to develop, coach, strategy, support, training? And then also, also the funding. I just want to mention that, that you know, we have to be able to do all, all of thing, those things. I, I know you guys know this. All right, uh, Christopher, last comment. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I will be as brief as I plan, as I can. In our group, when we had a, a very brief discussion, what we found that uh, one of the things was really concretely building the cluster, how to activate the companies, how to get them involved, and and similar one was actually building the cluster and then the storytelling. If you're going to build and also activating the companies, I mean, these are more or less all of the the same story. We need to get uh, custom. We need to get the companies involved. How to tell the story? How to sell the idea? How to to create this togetherness and and activate the companies to feel that they are a part of this cluster? So this is really one of the, the the key messages that our group found. And I just wanted to bring, since we have actually six participants and four notes about this one topic, really, as I can see yeah. it. Yeah. No, I I noticed, and Christopher, thank you. Um, you know, one of the things that I've always been a little bit amazed with is when we ask clusters to define their customers, it really means their members, and, and define what do they need, which is kind of a you know, customer insight or a member insight. And then you flip that and say, what, what is our value proposition? What do we deliver? Uh, or in more simple terms, why should these companies care about the clusters? I've been surprised to see how many struggle with that. Um, so on day number two, and then even more on day number three, we're going to dive into what's called the cluster value proposition. That's difficult to, to articulate. Uh, we're going to talk about the different uh, strategies that you can have. We're going to talk about the different um, personas or different member types that you can have. And we're also going to talk about the financing. Um, and in that discussion, for everyone, it's really important that you kind of help us in terms of, hey, let's let's spend some more time on this topic and let's skip this topic and let's go into this. Because if it, with, the, with the group we have here, if we can identify some common pain points and challenges that we have and, and we can really attack those, that would be, that would be fantastic. Um, finally, on, on that, uh, a lot of the material that we cover, we really hope we really hope that you find it to be relevant enough that you can take it back to your cluster and you can bring it into a board meeting, a leadership meeting, a project meeting. Uh, maybe you want to run a couple of workshops. Uh, we will provide you with everything. And then you have to go and do uh, all the rest of, of the work. Um, but this is this is good. This is good. Um, we will work through all of these items over the four days. Uh, this is a great introduction. We are going to take a 10 minute official coffee break. Uh, if you prefer tea, that's okay. What I would encourage you to is while you have a quick break, just take a look below. So Roberto will go through a, a short sort of opening, um, opening session about clusters. So we put the slides right here so you can review them 
uh, while you're having a break. And then afterwards, we're going to get into the groups and really start working. But first, um, what do you think, Roberto? It's time for a coffee break. Yeah, I will appreciate it. All right. Then, uh, Roberto, I, I have to ask you this. What, what time is it with you? Uh, for me, it's 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Okay. okay. I am a night owl, so no problem whatsoever. Nothing well, that a double espresso won't help. Go, go get yourself a double espresso. Everyone, go get a yes, cup sir. of coffee. Uh, we'll see you back here in 10 minutes, and I have a timer on the screen if you're not sure. Uh, and again, uh, take a few minutes to review the slides on the, on the screen, and we're going to start on those after our break. Thank you, everyone.
All right, happy finish, people. Let's uh, let's revert back. Um, so <clears throat> now that the first break is finished, and I know there was a question around lunch. Uh, you know, we will be serving French fries with mayo today for lunch. So if any of you want to come over for the lunch break, I'll be happy to host you. Um, also, we will have another 10-minute break. Uh, so we have a 10-minute break in about, give or take, an hour. Um, so for those of you that are in mood for lunch, you'll, you will have time for a quick break. And of course, we finish at 12 o'clock my time and 1 o'clock your time. All right, Roberto, my friend, um, I'll let you share screen and yeah. then you can take it away. And I think that E4 is already online. We want him to say hi. Let me share my screen. Greetings to you all. Just... Just coming in from New Zealand. Good to be with you this this evening, my time in New Zealand. Thank you. And Ifor, it's it's great to see you. Uh, what what time do you have? Is it like in the middle of the night or is it more manageable uh, early evening? No, it's more manageable. It, it's 8.15 in the evening. Okay, great. On, on a spring springtime evening. Yeah. <laughs> well, good to, good to have you with us. Welcome to Finland. Uh, to Norway and to Costa Rica. Thank you, thank you. Buenos dias. <laughs> Buenos dias, A4. <laughs> so thanks for being here. And I'll just go quickly through some key, con three key concepts that we believe uh, will be very helpful to frame the discussions that we're going to have throughout these couple of, of days. And it's really, to understand what do we mean by innovation superclusters, what are innovation superclusters, how you can build them. I saw a lot of comments about um, the, the cluster building element, which I always say is as important as having the domain knowledge. So if you want to get a little bit in, in this topic deeper, you can take a, a look at uh, this report uh, by Chris, Building Innovation Superclusters, which I believe was published around two years already, Chris, or three, right? Something like that. And you have the link, it is in Mandarin, Spanish, and English. So if you guys speak Mandarin, great way to practice it. So what are Innovation Superclusters? And since there are some, People from existing clusters, it will be great if you kind of measure your cluster against these six parameters that we think are very important. One is that innovation super clusters should be engines of economic growth that connect hundreds of members and partners. And particularly, we see how countries that are looking at innovation super clusters are really making a lot of emphasis on how, how these innovation support clusters are going to drive not only economic growth, but also economic and national transformation. Very important, successful innovation support clusters are magnets that attract talent, capital, researchers, and companies. So you can have an impact not only in terms of um, sourcing those nationally, but also internationally. Very important as well is they are collaboration networks. They are built around industries of the future. And I would say that this is a very key piece element of how we understand innovation superclusters. Specifically, when we think about how today innovation is being done, where are countries betting in terms of growth, in terms of uh, creating jobs. So think about industries of the future, and that is something that we will cover just in the next uh, few minutes. Also, they solve industry level challenges and opportunities. They are not that focused on the specific individual needs, but really is about understanding 
what are those industry challenges or those industries opportunities that can drive um, innovation, that can drive growth, that can drive uh, significant and massive uh, change. They're usually built around the concept of private-public uh, partnerships, and very important, they are developed by design. And finally, and very important, there are trust-based collaboration uh, platform. So when you look at your cluster, think about these six parameters and how much of these do you see embedded in your cluster? Now, also when we talk about innovation super clusters and, and, and see that we are not only talking about or using the word clusters, but innovation super cluster, it is because we see this massive paradigm shift in terms of how clusters should be built. Traditionally, we've seen the triple helix uh, where government, academics, and corporations collaborate. And, and this, is, this is the model that most of the clusters have been built behind. But today we see that the entrepreneurial ecosystems are driving massive innovation, massive value creation, and they need to be integrated with this triple helix, expanded. And now we have this new concept of the Pentagon. So it's really about how you build these ecosystems where you bring these five actors together and how do you create those linkages, those connections, and you boost collaboration among them in order to drive that change, in order to solve those industry challenges, in order to innovate or transform your industry. And talking about transformation, that is uh, one of the categories of clusters that we're going to cover. But when we look at the spectrum of different types of clusters, we see four. And we can start with what we call potential clusters or baby clusters and see that these are early networks. They don't have maybe a lot of uh, members. Their impact is still relatively low. And this is where we see a lot of um, uh, champions uh, trying to bring people together and build really a cluster. Then we have the emerging clusters. And what would you say, Chris, that most of the clusters that we see across Europe have been built behind this, uh, probably as emerging clusters. Um, they have members usually of the three uh, actors of the, the triple helix, meaning academics, government, companies, um, you will see that a country will have a wide range of, of these clusters. They might be around 50, 100 members. They will have obviously a little bit more impact, economic impact or um, value creation impact, but they tend to be more local by design. On the other side, you have what we call the growth clusters. And this is where you really start to see the ecosystem come to life. Uh, they compete more on a regional basis. They are uh, bigger in terms of membership. Um, they also usually have um, more developed business model. And at a national level, you will see probably 10, 30. If I look at Norway, Chris, you have around what? 10, 11 in this category, seven or so. Um, so again, these are more complete ecosystems. And then you have what we call the super clusters. And these are really when, when they become these big magnets, they are able to uh, play at a global stage, which is uh, important. They're very focused on high value creation and uh, they're mostly focused on the global market. And as you can see, we are talking about really massive 
massive networks that will create big impact. If we look across Europe, we will probably find some of them, obviously, in, 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 in countries like Denmark and Norway that have a lot of experience with clusters. You will find some of these networks in France. And this will be also a model that will be very common in uh, Asia Pacific. China will probably have uh, uh, a bigger number of, of super clusters, but what we see is many clusters moving from stage to stage. And obviously there are some cases and we will cover this a little bit later. As a Canada, they went big and bold and they really started building super clusters. I wouldn't say from scratch, but really focusing on creating those large ecosystem and boosting uh, their growth. As I said before, there are three big whys that we need to consider. Why do we need innovation super cluster? Why do they exist? And we have found that they are usually three categories that we can um, place clusters into. One is clusters that are focused on a growth model. That means that they are growing the existing business models. They're trying to expand usually. Um, they're focused on exports. They're more about efficiency-driven innovation, solving those industry challenges, creating trust and collaboration. But again, it's about really making what exists bigger. It's amplifying those existing business models within the industry. Then we have the transform uh, clusters. And these ones are more about accelerating transformation within member companies. Um, they navigate significant industry shift. There's a very good example in, in Asturias, Spain, a cluster uh, focused on the metal industry. They pretty much understood that they needed to go through a significant digital transformation program as an industry in order to continue competing. So that cluster is more about transforming the existing business models. And usually here you will start to see these clusters bringing startups, corporations together in order to boost innovation. And finally, we have the build clusters. And this is more about building a new industry from scratch. And it can be building a new industry from scratch within a specific country, or even focusing on industries that are just emerging around the world. At the beginning, there might be just a few members. They may struggle with funding and support, but they are well prepared to capture the benefits of major industry shifts once they uh, really reach those tipping points. So clusters that are working on, on, on batteries, for example, mobility, autonomous mobility, AI, probably they are going to be in the right place to capture that value creation as these industries uh, grow. And Chris, I'll, I'll let you cover the cluster journey map. You're a master explaining this. So if you want to take it, go ahead. Sure, thank you. So um, the cluster journey map is a visual representation of what does an end-to-end -end journey for the full lifespan of a cluster look like. Obviously, it's been simplified. I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, quite quickly. And I think this could be uh, very relevant for those of you that are sort of in the weeds, trying to build the cluster or trying to scale a cluster right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to start. Here. Now, a typical starting point for many clusters is that we're trying to grow an existing industry. So we have an industry already, but we want to grow it and we want to scale it. <clears throat> In that case, you have uh, the bits and pieces, or what we call the, the nucleus of industry collaboration in place. 
And then you kind of work through that and you arrive at the early organizing principles, which is really, really early stage conversations. Or slightly more mature, you get people together because we want to solve specific industry level challenges. For example, how can Finland uh, grow its gaming industry or, or how can how can we um, get the right licenses and support for 6G and 7G technologies in Finland? So very specific challenges. And you may or may not have a member organization in place or you may or may go to this nucleus of industry collaboration. And again, you end up with your early organizing. Then we have a different one. So here the starting point is actually, oh my God, we need to transform some of our old industries. So for example, for Finland, that could be telecom. How do we transform the telecom industry to make it more uh, appropriate for the future? For Costa Rica, this is the life sciences industry. For Norway, this is the oil and gas and the energy industry. And if there is, no existing collaboration, you typically have this lone hero. And especially if you have a build a new industry. So for example, for Finland, you know, how big is your solar industry or solar energy? Um, the entire value chain from research and development all the way through to, uh, to operational products, how, how big is that industry? So you may have a lone hero that says, hey guys, we need to build out the solar energy cluster for Finland. And I know it's probably a part of the Vasa energy cluster, but here we have such a big need to have a dedicated solar energy cluster. And again, you arrive at the early organizing principles. Or in some cases, for example, if you're Korea, Korea says, uh, we are losing the global battle for semiconductors. Taiwan, China, they're all stealing our semiconductor companies and industries and customers. We need to transform the economy. And typically we need a government led business plan and strategy. And it pulls us into early organizing principles. So you can have very different starting points, but you do come into the organizing principles. Then you pull together a team, typically one, two, three, four people, not more. You start early recruiting. This is what we call the, the key partners. Uh, the key members, uh, who wants to be a part of this, who wants to help pay for it, very important. And sometimes we see industry CEOs, sometimes we see like more mid-level uh, people. Sometimes it's really hard, really, really, really hard to do this early recruiting. And then once you've done that early recruiting, you develop a strategy that's easy to do on paper, but it's difficult to do if you're trying to get 100 people to agree and align on a cluster strategy. Then we have the early financing and eventually, and in some places this can be really quick. In other places it takes a long time, but you get this early cluster in place. So this is, this is the process. Now, if we do this you know, poorly, uh, you meet uh, an early demise. We see clusters that fizzle out. It's, it's really regretfully, but in different places around the world, we do see clusters that they just don't, they just don't work. Of course, not in Finland, other places. Uh, then we have some clusters where after a while, members stop caring, members stop showing up. So, you know, we used to be 100 members, now we're 60 members, now we're 50 members, now we're 25 members, and the last person can turn off the lights. Uh, some clusters struggle with no funding. But that's usually not the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge is member commitment and member interest. Um, then we have some clusters that have what we call low growth. So they struggle, they keep growing, but, but, but you can see they're not really flying, um, not really, mm, but they're, they're okay. But then we have the ones that are really growing. And it's really fantastic to see clusters that, that are scaling or boosting because they're they're flying. I mean, some of the Canadian clusters, they have 3,000 members. Now, there's a lot of reasons why that is bad. But in terms of really being able to attract and activate members, you know, you know very few have done it as, as well as, as Canada has. Now, <clears throat> this map is very dependent.
have if you have a high degree of trust and relationship this well. If you don't have this foundation, the blue uh, structure you see on the bottom, it becomes very challenging and, 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 and difficult. So Roberto, I think we'll, we'll stop there. That's the quick cluster journey map just laid out in just a few minutes. Uh, and these are our steps we have to work through. Back to you. Yeah, and, and we have seen, Chris, that um, understanding this journey is particularly very important for um, clusters that are either starting to, um, to work or there are in those early stages. And th this brings a lot of clarity, particularly of what needs to be done in terms of that early team, those champions, those who are really moving the initiative uh, forward. So we seen that understanding this uh, roadmap can be extremely helpful to bring clarity on what is uh, the job to be done ahead. And there are some, some examples or some cases that uh, we, we want to briefly share with you from, from different places like Norway, like Denmark, like Serbia, like Costa Rica, where we have been uh, working on. So Chris, if you want to make some reference to Denmark. Well, first of all, I mean, who, who doesn't love Denmark, yeah? So if, 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 you, if you guys want to go on a, like a study trip, I mean, R Roberto will be happy to host you in Costa Rica. He can take you to the jungles. He can take you to the beaches. But we should all go to Denmark. Denmark is, is much better. Because Denmark is really, really, really advanced and well-developed in the cluster world. So they have uh, more than 20 years of experience with national cluster policies. They've gone through different iterations or different waves. Roughly every five years, they, they change. Um, and then a couple of years ago, they developed this new uh, innovation power um, strategy for, for, for Denmark. And um, they used to have 42, uh, Roberto, if you move over one side, uh, they used to have 42 clusters. And there was a McKinsey study that said, you have nice clusters, but they're not good enough. That was, that was the key message. Uh, and that key message really propelled Denmark to look to Canada and said, okay, we need to supersize and strengthen our key clusters so they can actually go out and do more business development and less collaboration. Long story short, they now have 12 clusters. They have 10 Danish superclusters and they have two emerging clusters. And they've restructured this in a really nice way. Now, there's a lot of material written about the policies and the framework and the processes and how do you take 42 clusters and, and put them into a semi-volunteer state of 12. Uh, but Denmark is a country I think many can, can look to and learn from with regards to cluster policies. So right now, we're gonna come back to more about Denmark a little bit later, but right now for Finland and also for Norway, Denmark is a great example of how this world is, is evolving. Thanks. Um, Roberto, you're muted, but not muted. Yeah, I'm muted. Sorry. Um, I'll go straight to Costa Rica because it is obviously one case that I've been uh, very close to. And we see here uh, probably two dynamics. The dynamics of building a innovation super cluster bottom up, while at the same time you have a government initiative to build a national cluster program. So Costa Rica, it's obviously known for its um, nature, for its uh, good destination to relaxing. And Costa Rica already had a, a, a very large presence uh, footprint of multinational companies in the life sciences space. And we saw that there was a good opportunity as a country to go beyond just manufacturing medical devices, which was the core of this uh, blueprint of uh, multinationals, and really start developing a large ecosystem where we can bring 
innovation, research um, activities, and start creating value, uh, not only inwards, but also outwards. So we run a, a bunch of these uh, workshops with, with uh, around 70 people, which were the initial group that was working on this initiative. It was uh, sponsored by a national agency, the, the one responsible for FDI. And after several iterations, we came uh, to a clear strategy. And that was about positioning Costa Rica as a global leader in life science, health, and well being, which provides, I would say, a very large scope. But we focus on five key areas. One, entrepreneurship. There is a need to bring more or develop scale ups, startups, and build that ecosystem. We have, as I said, a large number of multinationals, but just a bunch of um, scale ups. Talent development, not only to support the existing industry needs, to start building more capabilities toward that value creation behind innovation, behind um, research, behind creating a health tech solution. And that was um, very important. One, how do we start uh, creating new business models within life sciences? How do we shift more from just producing year to uh, really building health tech business models. And for that, there is a clear understanding that uh, this has to be data-driven. So there has to be a big digital blueprint behind. And that is the stage where the Global Life Center Hub is. Now it's, it's reached that point in the journey map that Chris showed right at the end. It just has became a legal entity and now it's going on a wider um, scope and starting to recruit more members. But in parallel, there was something bubbling up uh, from the government in terms of really how do we organize certain strategic industries much better. And there was already in 2017, some discussions about uh, boosting clusters. We got a strategic partner, which is the IDB, and they committed with the government to start building a blueprint for a national cluster program. So after several years, in August of last year, in the middle of the pandemic, um, the national cluster program was launched, and it identified at that point 22 clusters, including the Global Life uh, Center Hub, uh, this life sciences uh, cluster, as one of the key strategic initiatives. And you can see that it is spread across the country. Why? Because for Costa Rica, it's very important to bring employment and, and development to, more, to other regions beyond the Central Valley where most of the economic activity uh, happens. And one of the things that I really want to highlight, this is probably the key message is that there was a recognition by the National Cluster Team uh, program that we needed to build early on deep cluster building capabilities. So answering some of those questions that you wrote in, in your expectations about um, understanding what needs to be done, um, creating that value proposition, that storytelling, putting the pieces in place, that was the first item that the National Cluster Program um, put in place. And we trained around 250 people in, um, in our program on how to develop a cluster. We worked two levels, one for more advanced users, some for uh, people that were just starting to see clusters and, 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 and become interested. What it was interesting is that we were able to create this common understanding, this common language, 
And this was three or four months ago. There was the first national meetup of these 22 clusters. And if you take a look at these, um, probably we had like 10 different clusters presenting, all use the same tools, all use the same language, they all use the same concepts. And that helped a lot to create, um, I would say a better transfer of knowledge uh, to understand different ways of building clusters. And some of the groups were even more advanced and started working on the cluster business model canvas, which is something that you guys uh, will be working on. So it's, it's a good case in terms of understanding how you can create clusters, one, top down, and on the other side, bottom up. And at the same time, I will say that once the national cluster program was in place, it has become one of the strategic allies of the Global Life Center Hub. And we see how it is really helping to build the cluster much, much faster. And that is, Chris, one of the key messages, the successful clusters and innovation super clusters are embedded in national cluster programs. And with that, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Roberto. I mean, I, this is such a cool story. I, I remember the first conversations for Costa Rica and sort of seeing that development. And the only thing that annoys me is you still haven't invited me over. Um, but I, 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 have, I, have, I have one question and then we're gonna, we're gonna open for questions for everyone. So <clears throat> Roberto, you said you trained more than 200 people in cluster capabilities. Uh, what was the biggest effect that you saw from, from doing that? Yeah, I would say Chris, that the biggest effect was that um, there was a common understanding of clusters, of what is the starting point to build a cluster because most, most of these 22 clusters are new initiatives and um, that they, they have a clear understanding of how to build it. Obviously the path, the, the journey will be different, but they have this common understanding and, and this really makes a difference, particularly when you're trying also to create this uh, movement, grassroots movement, let's say, of different uh, clusters uh, sharing. So really that common language, that common understanding, I would say that has been the most uh, impactful uh, element of, of this large scale training. Super, thank you. Um, all right, we're gonna see, we have time for, for one or two questions before we proceed. Um, do we have any burning questions, any? Anything from anyone? All right, cool, super. So we are going to, uh, Roberto, would you just zoom out and just show us? Uh, sorry, Pirko, go ahead. You have, uh, I see your hand up. <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh. One question Where did you get the initiative to, to start to build up this, uh, this uh, first cluster, this health? While you notice that they are just manufacturing. Where came the initiative to work on? Who was facilitating the strategy work? Yeah, uh, I, I will say that the key player was the national agency responsible of the FDI because uh, they have really created this expertise of, of, of bringing uh, companies in. They have been very good at uh, selling Costa Rica and quote unquote, the capabilities. So they were really the, the key players and probably the big spark that really accelerated the development of the Global Life Center Hub was that few months into the pandemic, um, Costa Rica was doing fairly well in, in managing it, that it created a national discussion that Costa Rica should be more aggressive in positioning worldwide in terms of life sciences, uh, health and well-being, as it fit some of the existing um, industries and, and, and country core uh, 
capability. So we, we have the, 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 the footprint of multinationals. Now it was really about creating an extended ecosystem. So it has some elements of government, it has some elements of um, industry, as there was already an emerging um, medical devices cluster, but that really was not able to uh, put in place a, a coherent strategy. So you had a little bit of those three elements. If we go to the journey, probably we see that there is some uh, participation of the industry, of the government, and an existing organization. Thanks. Uh, Roberto, we have one more question here. Last one from uh, from Ilka uh, around how this was funded uh, in the beginning and how it's funded now and how you see it being funded in the future. Yeah, um, the national program, it was funded by the IDB, which is a, a development agency, very important in here in the, the does a lot of work here in Latin America. So they have been the major sponsors in terms of the uh, national program. Now the discussion in terms of how to fund the Global Life Center Hub is ongoing, but short term, they are seeing that um, it will require a combination of public resources and private resources. So far, what the job that has been done has been uh, covered by a few of the large multinationals that we have, mostly Roche and, and Pfizer, and some key uh, chambers, like for example, um, the American Costa Rican chamber and a few others. Now they're working on the strategy, short term, combination of public private sources and long term, the view is that it should be actually a self sustaining cluster. In, in general terms, last comment, um, clusters are funded from a patchwork of very different sources. And it's crazy, especially in the beginning to see how different many of these sources are. And then over time, they, they mostly fall into a pattern where we have 50% government and 50% private industry. That's the, the super simple version. And then you can find all examples uh, with other, uh, other ways. Sometimes it's only industry and sometimes it's only government. But for most parts of the world, it is kind of a 50-50 industry and government. All right, good. Uh, Roberto, this is a great overview. And for everyone, we're now going to have a new, very quick coffee break. So we're gonna, we gave you 10 minutes last time. We're going to give you nine minutes now. Because when we come back, we're going to kickstart the teams. And you're going to be working hard and fast for one hour to get through the things that we want to do with you. And again, we're going to talk about Finland. And we're going to talk about the national level. And we're going to have some great discussions here. So everyone will take a coffee break. I'll put on the timer. Um, go get a refill. And then as soon as we come back, we're going to jump into the first of three group exercises. So enjoy your very short coffee refill break. Thank you. Welcome back. Roberto, how is your uh, midnight coffee going? Or espressos. Now the question is if we're going to be able to take a short nap, but energized. Good. To keep good, good, good. All right, everyone. So welcome back. We're going we're gonna to split you into four different groups. And in those groups, you're going to work through three exercises. The first one is really just a warm up exercise. What we are discussing here is the national perspective for Finland. So, the first question is okay, let's look at some of the future growth industries for Finland. For example, energy, for example, tourism, for example, um, gaming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We'd like you to place them in the map based on a couple of variables. One variable is how many new jobs? 
So, if we take, for example, batteries and storage, you say, okay, how many jobs do we think this is going to create for Finland over the next, give or take, uh, eight to 15 years? So batteries and storage is probably going to be a decent amount of work. There's a lot of potential. And the second question is, well, what's the value creation? So value creation is typically the, the revenue per employee or the value creation per employee. And that has very different answers for different industries. So if we assume that batteries and storage are going to be, I would suggest, a very, very important industry for Europe in the coming decades, you could suggest that batteries and storage would then qualify as one of these industries of the future, which means that we should really make sure to, to have a highly competitive cluster around this industry. Now, you can also have other industries, again, take a different example, and say crypto. Now, crypto is probably not going to create a lot of jobs in Finland. It's, it's not a job-creating type of industry. But if it does develop, it could develop to a very high level of value creation, which means it would be what we call a niche value creator industry. And then finally, you could have forestry. So you could say that, well, we actually believe that forestry and paper is going to continue to grow. There will be a good amount of job growth, but it's not the high knowledge high value industry that we'd like to see. So these are just three examples. And of course, you can disagree where I placed them. And you may say that, you know, crypto will do a lot of jobs. Batteries is, is old and forestry is dying. I don't think so. But you could, you could disagree. But the point is, we'd like you to have some ideas of what are some of the key industries for, for Finland. Then next, we're going to get into what we call a cluster program pre-engagement. This is juicy stuff. This is where you get a chance to discuss and develop a pre-assessment for, for Finland's national program. And you can use the discussion we've had so far when we get into this. Now we're planning 25 minutes. We'll see if you, if you need more time, we'll give you more time because this one is really, really, really powerful when we dig into. So that's the, uh, that's the opening. Uh, Roberto and I will be jumping around. I'll be speaking Norwegian and he'll be speaking Spanish and you can speak Finnish. It's gonna be all good as we work through this together. I'm gonna to put you into the breakout rooms. We have four groups, four teams, and you'll see that it says group number one, group number two, etc. So good luck. And then we'll be jumping around and working very closely with you. All right, uh, Roberto, you want to just jump around quickly and just see if they get started? Yeah, I will. Um, I, I forgot to say who is where, so we got to make sure they go to the right team spaces.
Welcome back. You know, Roberto, I don't I don't think anybody wants to go back to their job job after uh, after this uh, discussion. No, I see a lot of very enthusiastic um, people. And really, I think there is um, a very interesting discussion, Chris, about really what, what will be the right approach uh, to bring the cluster discussion in Finland. Now, there, there are, I mean, obviously, some discussions of how do we make this more of a national program and how do we get you know, other people involved and tomorrow we'll share a couple of examples of how that has been done in, in other countries, um, because it is fully within reach of, you know, getting that that lift up. Um, Ivor, I, I know you're uh, you're joining us from New Zealand, and I know it's it's starting to get late. But what were some of the things that you guys were discussing, or that you overheard uh, in in, your, in the group that you joined? Well, we, we, we covered quite a lot of ground, good, good discussion, good note taking, but, but just reflecting a little bit on clustering initiatives around the world, strong initiatives, yes, move at the speed of business, but the initiative is often co-funded, sometimes by a multiplicity of public agencies in partnership with the private sector. I, I like the way in Norway, for example, you've got, I think it's three government departments that co-fund Innovation Norway that in turn funds the clustering initiatives. It, 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 it's a neat example and I think re relevant to what you guys are exploring in Finland. It, it is indeed. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to work on financing and funding models tomorrow and we're going to show that the multitudes of options that are available and, and just like you said for uh, both Norway and Denmark they have multiple ministries and multiple entities that are involved at the national level. And then you also have different funding models in different regions at the regional yes. level. Uh, so it's a fantastic puzzle to, to, be, uh, to be working in. And um, through, through, I sense, Chris, Chris, through those different funding models, there's quite a lot of flexibility for an individual cluster. There, there is flexibility for the cluster and there's complexity for the cluster managers because they have to navigate many different funding mechanisms and funding programs and funding timelines uh, but but there are some some fascinating examples yes but 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 I do I do believe that having a national infrastructure which is not is it's not really about the funding per se but having a national structure in place you know, it, it does obviously make life easier 
Um, and hopefully, hopefully that's something that's going to emerge in Finland as well. All right, my friends, we are we are coming up on time. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure everyone has other meetings or uh, lunch dates or whatever to run into. Uh, when we start tomorrow, we're going to start with this conversation and we're going to take a look at the Canadian model, sort of how they went from A to B. And then we're going to tie some of the Finnish uh, processes into a, a similar um, national structure. And then after, um, after we cover that, we're going to go into the individual clusters and we're going to look at different elements, including the financing and the business models. Now, all the material is going to stay open. So if any of you would like to come back overnight, see what the other groups have been doing, uh, read some of the material that we put up, you're very welcome to. And then after tomorrow, we're going to be sending out some material for everyone as well. I think that we are, uh, we're good to go. Uh, thank you. Can... Yeah. Just right. a quick, quick mention. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I put in the chat uh, a link to a for to a small poll, it's one question. We'd just like to take this kind of overall grades for this each session. So please, if you could all open open the link and, and fill in the overall grade, just one question. I really appreciate that. So we get get feedback. And we will also send a feedback questionnaire then after, of course, the, the training and module, which has a few more questions, but but please fill, fill in it. I'm really grateful. Thank you very perfect. much. No, th thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, you actually, you beat me, uh, you beat me to it. So that was a perfect timing. So, so for everyone, we have a one question survey, one question survey that Larry set up. And if you could take the last 20 seconds to just complete that, uh, give it a quick uh, score. Uh, that will close out today's session. And then we'll see everyone again, same time, same place, same coffee tomorrow. And I look forward to continuing the conversations. And hopefully if we're, uh, we get a chance to have you uh, with us tomorrow as well. Excuse me. What was Ken, it? Yeah. We were supposed to to read some text, some info for tomorrow, preferably. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll put I'll put I'll put that in the chat. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, but again, I, I want to emphasize that it is completely optional, and uh, no one will be expected okay. to have read it. But if you would like to review this. Bye tomorrow. There we go. Cool. Um, all right, everyone. Thank you very much. We're uh, one minute past. I wish you a wonderful day in, in New Zealand, in Costa Rica, in Finland, and all over the world. And best of luck with your uh, cluster development. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Bye. Thank you, Chris and Roberto and everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you.